there. Welcome to another deep dive. And uh, today we're taking a look at self-wicking garden beds. Or uh, or tubs. Or tubs. Yeah. Or buckets. Yeah. You know, everyone seems to have their own name for them. But right. we're talking about those gardens that have pretty much water themselves. Yeah, those are pretty cool. And to help us break all this down today, we've got a few different sources. First, we'll check out this YouTube video from the Arms Family Homestead where they're building self-wicking tubs. Then we'll take a look at this Reddit thread all about self-irrigated planter buckets. Yeah, those Reddit threads always have some good stuff. Oh, yeah. A oh. ton of real-world experience and questions in there. And then I love it. to wrap things up, we'll watch this video from Alba Pepper. And they're building a self-watering raised bed. So nice. no matter what kind of garden you're dreaming of building, we've got something for you. Absolutely. Oh, man. Okay, so let's get into it. These self-wicking systems sound almost too good to be true oh, so right. how do they work well it's not magic or anything but it's definitely pretty clever imagine this you've got a reservoir at the bottom of your container or bed and it's holding a bunch of water mm -hmm. and then a wicking system pulls that water upwards and keeps the soil nice and moist oh interesting so instead of watering from the top you're watering from the bottom you got it that's where the science comes in you know how a candle draws up the wax with the wick? Mm -hmm. Well, it's that same principle here. It's called capillary action. The wicking material is pulling that water up from the reservoir. Okay. Just like how water would naturally move through the soil. Oh, so it's like the plants are always just getting a little sip of water. Exactly. And that's a good thing because overwatering can be jolled as bad as underwatering. For sure. So this way, they're never too dry or too wet. Right. And when you get that nice, even moisture, it makes your plants healthier. It's less stressful for you as a gardener. And in the end, your garden will just be more bountiful. I like where this is going. Now, I noticed that the guy in the Arms Family Homestead video, he really emphasized that you need airspace in that reservoir. Why is that so important? Well, think of it like this. Plant roots need to breathe just like we do. They need oxygen. And if they're always sitting in water, they can't breathe and they'll rot. Oh, that makes sense. So that airspace lets the roots get some air. Like a little breathing room? Yep. And there are a few ways to do that. In the Arms Family Homestead video, they used perforated pipes to create that airspace. But in the Alba Pepper video, he used corrugated drain pipes. And those create the airspace as well. Oh, cool. So different approaches, but with the same goal. Exactly. Right. Now, even though we're building a self-watering system, we still need to think about drainage, right? We can't let that reservoir get too full. Yeah, that makes sense. You don't want to end up with a swamp. Uh, -uh no, you definitely don't. And remember, in the Albo Pepper video, he puts in overflow drains to prevent that. Yeah. And in the Arms Family Homestead video, he drills holes in the tubs for the same reason. Right. So, so the excess water has somewhere to go. Right. Okay, so we've got our water source at the bottom. We've got the wicking action going on. We've got airspace for those roots. And we've got drainage to make sure it doesn't get too soggy. What else should we be thinking about? <laughs> well, you know, one thing that caught my eye on the Reddit thread was a question about mold in the reservoir. Oh, yeah. One person was using hydroton balls as the wicking material and was worried about mold growing. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something to consider because you know, a damp, enclosed space like that mm. can be the perfect spot for mold to grow. But in the Apple Pepper video, he had a good tip to prevent that. He said you should avoid using certain composts and manures that could make that mold problem worse. Oh, good to know. Yeah. So it's about choosing the right materials from the start. Exactly. Now that brings up another question. What about fertilizers? Can we use any kind of fertilizer in a self-wicking setup? Yeah, that's a good question because we don't want to mess up that whole system we've got going on. Exactly. Now, in the Albo Pepper video, he recommends using worm castings. Oh, yeah. Because they're a nice natural fertilizer that won't clog up that wicking action. Worm castings. Hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of worms, but if it's good for the garden... Right. I guess I can handle it. The Arms Family Homestead video, they use something else, though, right? Yeah, they used a combination of a fertilizer called Sustain, which is actually made from composted turkey feathers. And they also use some AC mineral, which is a mineral boost that comes from seawater. Wow, composted turkey feathers. Who knew? Right. So many different ways to do this. That's really cool. Okay, well, before we go too far down that fertilizer rabbit hole, let's get back to the basics and talk about the soil itself. Seems pretty important. Yeah, the soil is super important. Right. Both YouTubers said to use a really light and fluffy mix. Don't use that heavy topsoil. Okay. You want something light and airy because you still need good drainage and airflow, even though it's a self-watering setup. So no digging up that heavy clay from my backyard. Nope. 
We need to make sure that soil is working with us and not against us. Gotcha. So it seems like the main theme here is balance. We need to think about how water moves, how plants breathe, and create a system that works with nature. You got it. What are you thinking so far as we're learning about all this? Well, I'm really struck by how simple the concept is, but there's also a lot of science involved. Mm. It's really cool how something so straightforward can have a big impact on the plants and also save us a bunch of time watering. I know, right? And honestly, I'm ready to grab some tools and start building. But we've got more to cover. We do. So why don't we just jump right into part two and talk about the actual construction process. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. All right, so let's get into the actual building process here. Yeah, let's do it. I'm ready to actually get my hands dirty. Well, the elbow pepper video is a good place to start if you're thinking about building a raised bed. Okay. He gives a really good step-by-step -step guide. Sounds perfect. So <laughs> step one, gather the materials, I'm guessing? Yeah, you got it. You'll need some lumber for the frame itself. And then some heavy-duty pond liner to make that watertight reservoir. Right. And then you're going to need some corrugated drain pipes for the wicking action. And right. then some overflow drain tubes so it doesn't flood. Makes sense. And, of course, you'll need your tools, you know, your saw and drill and all that. Gotcha. So basically a trip to the hardware store. Pretty much. Yep. And don't forget your safety gear. Oh, yeah. Good point. Can't forget that. Safety first. Always. Okay, so you've got your materials. You've got your workspace all set up. What's next? What's next? Well, step two is building the actual raised bed structure. Okay. Albo Pepper used treated lumber, and he really emphasized, you know, choosing straight boards and thinking about how the word might warp over time. Yeah, you don't want it all wonky. Right. And one thing about treated lumber is if you use that, make sure it's the newer kind that's treated with copper and not the old arsenic stuff. Oh, yeah. Good call. Yeah. Got to keep those veggies safe to eat. Exactly. All right. So step three is building that watertight reservoir. Albo Pepper used that heavy-duty pond liner and stapled it all around the inside of the bed. Oh, yeah. He was really careful about making those folds in the corner so it wouldn't leak. So it's like a little swimming pool for the roots, but no chlorine. Uh -huh, exactly. And he made sure that the liner went up higher than the overflow drain holes so there was no way water could leak out. A good thinking. So now for the part I'm really excited about. Yeah. Step four is adding those corrugated drain pipes that make the wicking happen. Oh, yeah. This is the good part. And create that airspace for the roots. Right. So he put two rows of pipes running the length of the bed with a space between them. Okay. That space is super important so the water can drain so the soil doesn't get too wet. I'm starting to see how all these pieces fit together. The pipes are giving the roots air to breathe. They're making sure the water can drain. And they're pulling that water up to the soil. You got it. It's all about finding that balance, right? Right. Now, I saw some people talking about whether or not to cover the drain pipes with fabric in the YouTube video and on Reddit, you know, to keep the soil from clogging them up. Hmm. What do you think about that? Well, it seems like most people agree that you don't really need to. Really? Yeah, the holes are pretty small, so the soil can't really get through. And if you're using a light and fluffy soil mix like you're supposed to, right. it's not really an issue. That's good to know. One less thing to worry about. So now we've built our bed, we've lined the reservoir, we've got our drainage all set up. Yeah. Time to fill it with soil. Yeah. But remember, we talked about this earlier. Right. You can't just use any old soil. you got to use something that's light and fluffy. Right, like that stuff they sell for containers and raised beds. Exactly. You want peat moss, vermiculite, perlite, okay. compost. So no heavy clay. No heavy clay. we got to keep it light. Got it. To... So... About the fertilizer, we got to be careful about what we use, right? Because mm -hmm. we don't want to overload the system. Yeah, you're right. We need to be mindful of that balance we talked about. Yeah. Albo pepper is really into worm castings. Worm castings, again. I, I know, right? But they're a really gentle way to fertilize without messing up the wicking action. Okay, I guess I'm getting used to this whole worm casting thing. What did the Arms Family Homestead use? They used a granular organic fertilizer. Okay. Probably compost. Mm -hmm. And then they also use this mineral supplement made from seawater. Wow, there are so many different options. So many. Okay, before we get too carried away with all the fertilizers, let's just take a minute to process everything we've learned so far. Oh, good idea. We've talked about building the structure, lining the reservoir, putting in all those drain pipes and overflow drains, choosing the right soil, and now we're talking about fertilizers. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, but it's all coming together, right? It is. Now I see why each step is important and how it all works together. Drainage, 
airflow yeah. materials. Yeah. It all matters. So it's like putting together a big puzzle. Exactly. And all the pieces got to fit just right. If we want this self-wicking thing to actually work. Right. Well, we're going to have to stop here and pick up this conversation in part three. There's still a lot to talk about. We've only just scratched the surface. Right. So much good info in those sources. All right. Well, let's jump right into part three then. Okay. So we're back for the final part of our deep dive all about self-wicking garden beds. It's been quite the journey, hasn't it? It really has. And I feel like we've learned so much. We have. I'm ready to go build one of these things. Me too. But before we do that, yeah. is there anything else we need to know? Any other little tips or tricks? Well, there are a few things, yeah. Remember in that Arms Family Homestead video, how he cut the PVC pipe for filling the reservoir at an angle? Oh, yeah, 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 he did. He was really specific about that. Yeah, why was that? Well, it helps the water flow into the reservoir more easily. Oh, okay. But also, it lets the air escape. Oh, so the water doesn't glug, glug, glug. Exactly. It's all about that smooth water movement. Gotcha. And I know Albo Pepper had some pretty strong opinions about what not to do when building these beds. Oh, yeah, he did. Like no topsoil. Right. Absolutely no topsoil. It's way too dense, and it'll mess up the drainage and airflow. Right. We need that light and fluffy mix. Exactly. All about those roots being able to breathe. So it's all about choosing the right materials. Right, which is what we've been talking about this whole uh, time. Pretty much, yeah. And, you know, he also said not to use certain manures or those bagged composts you get at the store. Mm, really? Why not? I thought compost was always good for the garden. Well, usually it is, but with these self-wicking beds, they can actually cause problems. Like what? Well, they can make mold and bacteria grow in the reservoir. Oh, yuck. Yeah, they're just a little too hot for that kind of enclosed uh, environment. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I guess it's all about understanding how different materials are going to react in a self-wicking system. Yeah, you got it. You got to think about everything. So worm castings are still the way to go. They seem to be the safest bet, yeah. All right, so we've covered materials. We've talked about how to build it, what not to do. Mm -hmm. Anything else we should keep in mind as we start building these things? Well, besides all the practical stuff, I think the most important thing is to pay attention to your garden and be willing to experiment. Oh, so like a scientist. Exactly. Every garden is different, every climate is different, and every plant has its own needs. So we're not just setting it and forgetting it. Right. You got to keep an eye on things, see how your plants are doing, are they happy, are they wilting. You might need to adjust how often you water, maybe change the soil mix or the fertilizer. So it's all about finding that sweet spot for your specific garden. You got it. And hey, Maybe you'll discover some new wicking material or fertilizer blend that works even better. Ooh, that would be cool. Right. That's what's so great about these systems is that you can really customize them. I love that. So it's like science meets creativity. Exactly. So as we wrap up our deep dive here, what are your main takeaways? What are you most excited to try out? Well, I think what I'm most excited about is just feeling like I can do this. It's not about following a bunch of rules. It's about understanding the basic principles and then making it work for me. That's a great way to put it. It's about taking control of your gardening and saving water and just creating this amazing little ecosystem in your backyard. I love it. Well, for all of you listening out there who are now inspired to build your own self-wicking garden, uh -huh. go back and watch those videos and read that Reddit thread and gather up your materials. and Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Yeah, just go for it. Uh -huh. And if you have any questions, you know where to find us. We're always here to help. And don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe. And tell us what you want to deep dive into next. Yeah, we're always looking for new things to learn about. Happy gardening, everyone.